So today I want to talk about uh, modified unit analysis or MUA and what I'm referring to as the X standard. Okay, so the X standard is going to replace the NIST standard, the N-I-S-T standard. And uh, so the goal of my work is to actually replace the NIST standard with the X standard and I'm going to calibrate the system from scratch. Okay, so I'm going to rebuild, I'm going to build up a standard which is like the NIST standard. Okay, I want to build up something that is functionally identical to the NIST standard, only I would like to do a better job. I think I can do a better job. Okay, so in the work that I do, building medical devices. I'm the calibrator. I know how to calibrate things and I know how to calibrate things to the best number of digits of precision that the system needs in order to operate uh, correctly, okay? So I have a good understanding of the um, accuracy and the digits of precision that I need to solve my problem. And so what I want to do with the X standard is I want to give the standard the best chance to succeed. Okay, so I want the parameters to give the applications that use the standard the best chance to succeed. So when I talk about calibrating the system, really what I'm talking about here is calibrating the universe. Okay, so I once wrote a paper called Calibrating the Universe and Why We Need to Do It. And that was published in a journal called Physics Essays. Okay, you can probably go find that. Um, so I know the importance of calibration and what I'm doing here is an extension of that paper in that I'm calibrating the system and the system is the universe itself. So whenever I'm calibrating a system, what I do is I find sort of the best number in my system. I find the best um, calibrated to the most digits of precision um, part in my system and then I try to make sure that everything else is at least as good as that. Okay, so I am all about the digits of precision. As a computer scientist, I like digits of precision. I know what they are, I know where they come from, and I like to keep as many as possible. Okay, even if some of the digits are um, imprecise, I still like to keep all the digits of precision so then I can compare all the digits of precision with another number I calculate with a similar uh, number of digits. Okay, so digits of precision are really important to me and I try to keep as many as possible in my calibration procedure. So the most important, the most accurately calibrated parameter that we use in physics is the speed of light. Okay, the speed of light is exactly this number. 299792458.0. Okay, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so this is an exact number. This has been uh, finely tuned. Okay, so we, uh, what we did, and I've made other videos on this, so I won't get into it too much detail, but we calibrate the second using the cesium atom. Okay, we use the frequency of the cesium atom uh, to calibrate the second, and then we calibrate the meter such that this number is exactly this number. Okay, so this value is uh, has been calibrated. We have tweaked all of these parameters to make sure that the speed of light is um, 299,700, sorry, 299,792,458 meters per second. Okay, so this is how far, uh, this number of meters is how far light travels in one second. So the next important constant in the X standard that we're going to talk about is the speed of light squared. Okay, C squared. Now this is an equally important constant because it appears in many equations including and especially E equals MC squared. Okay, so C squared is an important constant and, and I think it should we should be writing it uh, out the digits of this constant in full. Okay, so that way we're sure we're not missing any digits of precision. A lot of times when you use a calculator, you will uh, miss some digits of precision. And so if you write out the constant, uh, if you square the speed of light and write it out like this, then this is an exact quantity. Okay, we're not missing any digits of precision. 
This, uh, the speed of light is, has been calibrated to be an exact quantity. This is also an exact quantity. Okay. So, so far, these are the constant constants that we can exactly say are true. And so I end the exact constants with the point zero. Okay, so this is an exact constant. This is 0 0 0 0 0 0 It's a perfect number. And this is an exact constant, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. So there are no more uh, digits beyond the decimal place. Okay, so we've got two exact quantities here. And as a calibrator of mechanical devices, of surgical mechanical devices, I really like this because this is uh, this accuracy is... Uh, perfect so far I would not be making any mistakes there would be no errors in my system if I used uh, these numbers okay there's another reason why I think it's think it's important to have c squared as a constant all on its own because I think it's important to actually look at the digits okay uh, these digits as you're going to see are extremely important okay so the next important constant in the X standard is the electric constant. Okay, this electric constant is Coulomb's constant. Okay, and it is basically the inverse of permittivity. Okay, so we give it the symbol Ke. This is the electric constant. It's the Coulomb constant, numerically equal to the Coulomb constant, and uh, it is equal to one over uh, four at four pi times permittivity. Okay, so you can see that the electric constant is the inverse of permittivity. Okay, so in modified unit analysis, I actually am phasing out the um, epsilon zero. I'm phasing out the permittivity uh, constant, and I'm only using the Coulomb constant. Okay, if you want to get back the permittivity constant, you can, you know, you can extract it from the Coulomb constant. But in modified unit analysis, the Coulomb constant is the constant that gets reported in the X standard. Okay, and so you'll notice something strange here. You'll notice that the digits in the electric constant are exact, have exactly the same digits to all digits of precision of the speed of light squared only there are it's seven orders of magnitude smaller so there, there's one two three four five six seven the decimal place is over here and so uh, basically this number is being multiplied by 10 to the minus seven okay so where does that come from well it turns out the magnetic constant which is the permeability of free space which is normally written as um, mu zero. Okay, this is the permeability of free space and mu zero divided by four pi is exactly 10 to the minus seven. Okay, so in the X standard, we are going to be reporting only the magnetic constant Km, which is exactly 0 0.000001 or 10 to the minus seven. This is also a perfect exact number. So Km is an exact number. The uh, speed of light squared is an exact number and the speed of light is an exact number. Okay. So, but also the electric constant when written this way is also an exact number because the Coulomb constant is merely the speed of light squared times the magnetic constant. Okay, so let's have a look at that, um, this quickly. Okay, so when you look at the relationship between the speed of light squared and the Coulomb constant and the magnetic constant, you will see that the speed of light squared is equal to the electric constant divided by the magnetic constant. Okay, and so the electric constant, Coulomb constant, is 1 over for pi uh, epsilon zero, and the magnetic constant is epsilon, or sorry, mu zero over four pi, and then you end up with the equation that you are used to seeing, where you see the speed of light is equal to the square root of one over epsilon, epsilon zero mu zero. Okay, so the important point here 
is that the um, Coulomb constant divided by the magnetic constant is equal to the speed of light squared. And so uh, when you rearrange this, you discover that the Coulomb constant is equal to the speed of light squared times the magnetic constant, which just happens to be 10 to the minus 7. Okay, so when you take the um, Coulomb constant, sorry, when you take the uh, speed of light squared and multiply by the magnetic constant, 10 to the minus 7, you get the speed of light squared, which is 7 orders of magnitude smaller than the speed of light squared. So when you write stuff like this, when you write the parameters like this, you can see the relationships more clearly and it makes it easier to remember the numbers, okay? So you only have to remember the speed of light, these digits here. And with that, you can calculate the speed of light squared. And with that, you can calculate the Coulomb constant, okay? So these are all sort of um, intertwined constants. They appear as different constants in different equations, but they, are, they all emanate from the same thing, which is the speed of light. Oops, uh, sorry about that. That was supposed to be a C. So uh, what we have is uh, the impedance of free space can be calculated by either taking the magnetic constant and multiplying it by the speed of light or taking the electric constant and dividing it by the speed of light. Okay, and here you get a value of uh, 29.9792458. Okay, so this is, and this has the units of ohm. So in the modified unit analysis, the way I'm doing unit, unit analysis with the, um, make the electric constant and the magnetic constant, the Coulomb constant and 10 to the minus seven. Okay, because I'm using these constants instead of the standard permittivity and permeability. Okay, the permittivity and permeability are baked in to my constants. So because I'm using these constants, I get a um, the impedance of free space is equal to uh, 29.792458 ohms, okay? But here's the cool thing. What you'll see here is that these digits are exactly the same digits as the speed of light only they are 10 to the 7 orders of magnitude smaller, okay? So you've got the decimal place, you know, you're multiplying by the 10 to the 7 again. So here, of course, it is, makes sense when you look at the fact that we are multiplying the speed of light by the magnetic constant 10 to the minus 7 to get a value in the order of 10 to the minus 7. Okay, so 29 point to get exactly the same value as the speed of light only 10 to the minus 7 um, times uh, this, you know, the size. So it's much, it's a much smaller number, but it is exactly, the digits are exactly the same. Okay, the digits are exactly the same. And so this is the beginning of my calibration, the calibration of the system, the calibration of the universe, the calibration of the ether. Okay, really what I'm doing here is I'm calibrating the ether because the ether has a speed of light, okay, and the speed of light squared is used quite often. Um, the electric um, constant is directly coupled to the medium, and that's why it is this value here, okay. And actually, this uh, the mag magnetic constant, interestingly, is an artifact of the conversion from the CGS system, right, from the old... Um, uh, centimeter gram second system to the MKS, the meter kilogram second. Okay, this conversion gave us this ten, uh, this seven orders of magnitude difference. Okay, that's where this came from. So that's why this is exactly 10 to the minus seven. Okay, so with these values, I have exact values for all of these constants which are associated with the um, medium for the propagation of light, which uh, most people just refer to as free space. So free space is just space that doesn't create, that doesn't contain any atoms. Free space is space that, you know, is literally a vacuum. Okay, so these are the parameters describing the vacuum, in my opinion. 
And so um, this is the beginning of my X standard. Okay, so I'm going to be mapping out all the important parameters. I'm going to try and calibrate to as many digits of precision that I can possibly get. So some of my values might actually be better in terms of digits of precision than the current NIST standard. Okay, so I want to improve the precision of the numbers and hopefully, or at least be exactly the same, same only I have, um, this is sort of a little bit more easier to understand and easier to remember. So in order to remember my system, okay, in order to remember this system, you only need to memorize the digits for the speed of light. Okay, then you can plug that into your calculator and get the speed of light squared. You can divide that by, or you can multiply by 10 to the minus 7 and get this value here. Okay, you, all, you also need to memorize this value. So the 10 to the minus 7 also needs to be memorized. And then if you want to get to the impedance of free space, you just put the decimal place there. Okay, you write down the digits of the speed of light and you put the decimal place there. And this all works out. Okay, this all works out. The relationships all work out, and I'm not going to get into any into any, any more detail than that. I just wanted to show you um, the beginnings of the standard that I'm trying to develop that will be basically a, a complete rewrite of the NIST standard, at least of the, the constants and the way the units are expressed. Okay, so modified unit analysis and the way that I uh, present the constants, okay? So this is going to be called the X standard, and this will be the standard that I use moving forward, okay? So that's all I'm gonna do for today. I'm really excited about this, actually. I think this is really looking really cool. I really like um, these relationships that I'm seeing between, say, the electric constant and the speed of light squared. And, um, and the fact that this is a nice, tight, um, perfect starting point for calibrating a system. And more importantly, in the calibration of the universe itself.